unless I'm broke. <laughs> Did I hear someone say that looks an improvement? <laughs> but welcome to all of you. Um, I see you've all read the, the emails from, from Norma, which are not Norma's words, but they're words from on the high, not totally on the high, but um, <laughs> Anglican on the high. And I think they do make good sense, especially when you hear the news coming out of uh, Spain this morning. Yeah. So we owe it not just to ourselves and those we love, but to everyone around us. And if I'm the only priest in the, in the Church of England today that's wearing it, well, so be it. But I suspect I'll not be alone. But welcome all of you. When you leave, Nora said, could you please leave through the side door? So we have sort of a, is that right? That, that door? That side goes through that door, and this side goes oh, through the main door. Thank you. Oh. Get a that's fine. I go through the back window. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's fine. But also this morning, our thoughts go to Claire and family. Claire has done a fabulous job for us in the, in, in the benefits this last few months, hasn't she? She's kept us totally yes. together, yeah. but from afar. I think she's done a wonderful job with Ron helping on the electrics and everything else. I think it's been superb, but we have so much to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to sit down? Because before we start the actual service, um, I've got three sets of uh, bands to read. I published the bands of marriage between Jack Stuart Henderson of St Matthew's Sinclair Road, London, and Harriet Mary Delory, also of St Matthew's Sinclair Road, London. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. Thank you. Now moving on. I published the bands of marriage between Edward George Upton of St Peter's Rockley and Tulula Iona Silva, also of St P I so Sorry, I read that wrong, I'll start again. Um, I published the bands of marriage between Edward George Upton of St Peter's Rockley and Tallulah Iona Silver, also of St Peter's Rockley. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason why they may not marry each other, you are to declare it now. And finally, I published the bands of marriage between Charles Matthew Beach of St Mary Magdalene of Newark and Helen Phoebe Esther Stephanie Gaskin of St Peter's Rockley. This is for the third time of asking. If any of you know any reason in law why they may not marry each other, you ought to declare it now, please. Thank you. The Lord is here. Yes, we pray together. Almighty oh, God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, let the thoughts of our hearts, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. 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 Lord, Lord have mercy. Jesus says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from sin and turn to the Lord, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, 
so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered. Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the word of the Lord. And so Matthew's parable season, as I called it last week at Bishop Sutton, continues today. And once again there is so much contained in today's familiar Gospel reading. I'll confess I've never planted a mustard seed, so to be honest, I don't really know the extent of its potential growth. I can, however, remember digging out a plant that had grown quite enormous in our garden in Alsford. The flimsy stems alone were about eight or nine feet high although the flowers at the top were only about an inch across. I've no idea what it was called. It really did look quite ridiculous. But when I took the head off and I looked at the seeds, well, they say the mustard seed is the smallest of seeds, but this was just like fine dust. How on earth it could have shot up to about nine feet, I'll never know. The seeds were little more than dust, as I say, in appearance, and yet one tiny seed could produce so much. I suppose that another and even more vivid example is a tiny acorn that has the potential to grow into a mighty oak tree that can live and grace the countryside for centuries. In today's Gospel reading, Matthew completes his collection of Jesus' parables with five similes, each beginning, the kingdom of heaven is like. The first two use images of a mustard seed and of yeast, from small and almost invisible and insignificant beginnings, great things can come. The next two recount discoveries treasure in a field, and a pearl of a great price, both bringing life-changing life joy to the finder, who sells everything to find the treasure. The final simile describes a fishing net, whose catch is sorted, the good fish are kept, and bad ones tossed back into the sea. These parables or similes together speak of the nature and faith of God. The tiny, seed of the tiny seed or piece of yeast transforms itself and what is around it. In God's kingdom, the smallest and least significant things are capable of incredible power. You know, faith is like this, nourished and nurtured, 
Slowly but surely, faith grows. Maybe indiscernibly at first, until suddenly it becomes noticeable. And then can almost snowball as it further develops. Perhaps we can identify a person whose faith has grown into enormous potential and we feel awed. But we should also feel challenged, for the seed only grows to a tree if it is nurtured and protected. If somebody with big boots crushes the little seed in, it will become nothing and die. If the yeast is mixed with boiling water, it will die. Faith finds each one of us in a variety of ways. And our discoveries and life journeys take many routes. In the story, the treasure finder hides his discovery until he can buy the field. Was it a sudden decision or one taken over many years to make? Maybe he visited the site regularly, privately and unseen as he struggled to make his decision. Then the pearl merchant may have served a lifetime before he found the incomparable specimen and made his unequivocal decision. Then the parable about the net has a contemporary ring to it, doesn't it? For disquiet has been expressed in recent years about the quantities of unwanted fish that are being thrown back dead into the sea, so that trawlers do not exceed their quotas. In a hungry world, this waste is deplorable and certainly challenges our value systems. And then there's that parable about the mustard seed and yeast, as it tackles what the church calls salvation, and which is also about values. God gives us a chance to be his. And yet the decision must be ours. In this example, we each have the potential to be both seed and sower. The seed within each one of us is planted often early on, but it may take many years to germinate, and it may still be growing and developing throughout our lives to the moment we depart this earth. None of us are too old to say that our faith is complete, or even I'm too old to develop through faith a closer and more meaningful relationship with Christ. And similarly, God may be using any one of us, any one of us, to be the sower, the one that sows a seed in the heart of another, a seed that may grow and flourish almost immediately. Or it may be a seed that lies dormant, deep in someone for years, before coming to life and flourishing. Any one of us could be the one to influence another in their faith formation. We may be the yeast in that person's life, often without even realising it. And even in our twilight years, age really is no barrier in this faith business. The yeast within each one of us is not age restricted. And yes, of course, we can include ourselves or exclude ourselves from God's love. And yet, God, the creator of an exquisite and productive universe, is heartbroken at every life thrown away. Like today's dead fish, such lives lost are a lamentable waste. And so in conclusion, God desires that seed within each one of us to develop, 
to flourish and to continue thriving through to the very end of our life. Just like that tiny mustard seed, we all have that potential to grow and develop into something mighty, even through whom great things can come. Be prepared to be surprised. Amen. <coughs> Remembering those Christians suffering persecution 
in China and the Middle East. Give them the courage and strength to persevere and the joy of knowing you. Guide leaders of all faiths in seeking reconciliation and unity as they care for their followers. We pray for our bishops and archbishops, for our diocese and deanery, for all our church wardens, and especially for Claire and Bryce. May they continue to rejoice in your word and help us to understand our part in establishing your kingdom. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Caring God, this pandemic has shown us how frail our lives are. We pray for all those who have been ill, those who are still recovering, those who have missed treatments and diagnosis of their conditions because of the virus, those who are anxious and fear for the future. We pray too for all the carers, hospital staff and other key workers who have borne the burden of working to keep us healthy and safe, whilst fearing for their own well-being. Send your blessing on the scientists working to create vaccines against the virus. Thy kingdom come. Thy Eternal God, in a moment's silence, we name those known to us who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit at this time, and for those who care for them. We pray for those who have died from the virus, from their, for their families and friends who are not able to be with them in their last illness. And we pray for the staff who tried to be their family whilst they were dying. Send your healing balm to comfort and console them all. We remember those who have died recently from any cause, or whose anniversaries fall near this time. Be with those who mourn them and lessen their grief. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom be done. In the weeks ahead, fill us with your grace and send us out to be the yeast in our villages, lifting spirits, showing your love, and doing your work until your kingdom finally comes. Heavenly Father, Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord of the Lord Jesus Christ draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of